Hello everybody, what's going on and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode and welcome to Title Deciding Day. Four games to play, 12 points to play for, evenly matched right now with Manchester United on 71 points. Today's the day we settle this title. Now, I know what you're all thinking, how on earth have we got Bournemouth to top spot in our first season of playing? Well, of course, for the majority of this first season, um, there wasn't the patch to make sure that the teams are playing their strongest teams. So teams like Manchester City, who have lost 10 games this season. Teams like Liverpool, who have lost 8 and drawn 11. Spurs down in 6th. Chelsea down in 7th. Arsenal down in 9th. There's a lot of top-tier teams who have underperformed in this first season. So, looking ahead to next year, I fully expect a resurgence and for them to sort of climb back up the table. Of course, the patch has now happened, which means that they hopefully will field stronger teams against games that we're not playing in um, and then we won't see some strange sort of positions for these teams. But like for the likes of Man City and Liverpool to be drawing 11 and losing 10 games, you just don't expect that to happen. So that's the first thing. Secondly, we have done unbelievable work this first season. We have finished off and been clinical when we've needed to be in chances that we've created. We've defended so well as well with 23 goals conceded. So there's a lot of positives that we have to give ourselves, but it's not done yet. Manchester United, 71 points. They are close to the zone goal difference as well. Today's the day, really, and we've got Manchester City to start things off. They actually don't play Man United, so they'll have a game in hand. And depending on what happens in this first game, of course, if they win that game in hand, they could take sole spot of first. So... It's time to head off into our first game of the day. We've got a press conference to do first, so I'll go into that, and then we'll get straight into our first game. The first question is around Thiago Almada. Will we see more of him today? I will say rotation is key because I don't think he'll start against Manchester City. Although it seemed unlikely back when it all started, the Premier League title is well within your reach. Well, we've only a few matches remaining. him. Can your team see it through till the end? We'll have to stay focused. Um, we don't want to waste any chances that come our way. And lastly, no team managed to beat you so far. Do you hope to keep that unbeaten streak going? I am assuming they're referring to the recent run of games because, of course, we have lost games this season. I believe we've lost seven this year, which is a lot when you think about it. If we go on to win a league title, losing, losing seven games in the process is a lot. So do you hope to keep the unbeaten streak going? Um, I prefer not to get into these mind games. Um, they add pressure and I don't really want that. My team's already ready, so Manchester City up first. Let's do it. And here then are the lineups for the first game of the day. Edison in goal for Manchester City. A back four of Mendy, Kimpembe, Stones and Cancelo. Fernandinho just in front of them. Kev DB, KDB in, uh, in CM with Silva alongside him. That's Bernardo Silva. Uh, Sterling, Aguero and Sane as the front three. De Bruyne has actually got a slight injury, so... Um, I think he should be okay to start the game, but they have got uh, Royce on the bench. They've got Rodri on the bench. So a couple of, you know, big players to be able to bring on. For us, Butland starts in goal. Kelly, Ake, Cook and Stacey with Fraser, Phillips, Cook and King. Madison just in behind Callum Wilson. From the Etihad Stadium, first game of four for this title race. And it's a huge game as well. This is going to be tough. Let's get into it. Here is Sterling, already on the attack for Manchester City. Sterling trying to beat Ake. Ake is fighting for possession and lost it still. Sterling! Seven minutes in and Manchester, hit, uh, Manchester City sorry, are here to spoil the party for Bournemouth. I mean, I don't know how he didn't win possession. Ake there, I thought he'd got the ball. He was fighting with Sterling to try and take possession. Sterling stronger in the end. You can see, I don't know how on earth he got through. And then when he does, Raheem Sterling doesn't miss in those sort of positions. And just like that, Manchester City won Bournemouth nil. Oh, Botland got a touch on it. Jack. Oh, it hurts even more when you see it that he gets the touch. I thought it was Sterling who just fired it home. But there's a touch off our goalkeeper. Oh, this is where we have to see what we're made of then. Because now we're behind... In this game, and of course, as it stands, United will have a game in hand and they'll be on the same points as us if it remains the same. So this is where we get to see what we are made of. That was literally the first attack of the game as well. KDB on the run for City, finds the ball through to Sane. Sane skips past of Jack Stacey. And there is Steve Cook to put it behind at the moment. I just can't seem to find any fluidity in our play at the minute. 
as the ball is sent in and we've managed to win the first header. Ryan Fraser to pick up the pieces and he's got the pace as well to go around KDB. And Ryan Fraser's away from him. This is fantastic work by Fraser, but there has to be an end product as he's just using his pace to his advantage. Fraser looks for the shots. And Edison is there equal to it. There wasn't really a cutback. There were so many Manchester City bodies back that to find anybody free would have been quite difficult. So tried the shot. Fraser had it saved by Edison. There's Phillips. And there's the stand because that's nowhere near the goal. Sterling's ball through to Aguero. Off the post. Rebounds there. KDB makes it too. We are in trouble here at the Etihad. We are getting absolutely nothing from Manchester City's defence. We can't even create a chance. And at the moment, it's all too easy for City. It just feels like we're running out of steam when it's mattered the most in the title race. Oh, 2-0 down. I just I can't seem to break this City team down at the moment. Every time we have it in a, in a forward area, there's just not an option because City get so many players around you and stop you playing football that it's so difficult. And as we approach half time, City 2, Bournemouth 0. I think it's safe to say we're going to be going into the break at 2-0 down. And more importantly, this is going to be huge for the title race as Joshua King now needs a chance just before half time. King trying to put the cross in. Mendy defends it and Kimpembe can't keep it in play. So we will get a corner. Is there a chance in this? Fraser's delivery. Madison tries to attack it. It's going to come out for Lewis Cook. As he fights for possession. Lewis Cook shots. And Stones blocks it. And there's the half-time whistle. I just can't seem to get anything going. Because as soon as we get the ball, we do that and lose it. City again. We're just not up to standard the way we've played this season so far. KDB again looking for a way forward. There's delivery in. Ake can head it clear. But it's only for a moment because then it comes straight back at us. But lovely play by Brooks actually. Sets us off on the front foot. And it's Callum Wilson in behind. There's the ball towards him. Wilson now on the right foot. Callum Wilson pulls a goal back for Bournemouth. Just what we needed. Pick the ball up. Let's go again. We haven't got time to be wasting. Lovely ball from David Brooks. And literally our only opportunity. And Callum Wilson's taken it. We needed that. 2-1. Back in the game. Half an hour to play. One thing we can't let happen now, though, is Man City to slow down the game again because they, uh, they gave us that opportunity. That's poor from them as Callum Wilson now has got Joshua King just in front of him. And all of a sudden, Bournemouth are in for number two. And we've done it. It's a carbon copy of the first goal. And we keep this title race alive as it stands. City are crumbling all of a sudden. I just said the one thing we can't let them do is slow the game down because that's what they were trying to do as soon as they conceded there. A momentary mistake. And Joshua King profits. Lovely finish as well. Carbon copy of the first one from Callum Wilson. I don't know what to tell you. Two goals inside, what, five minutes? Here is Brooks as Bournemouth now beginning to find a little bit of fluidity in their play. King's in again. Oh, I don't believe it. It's Manchester City 2, Bournemouth 3. What a turnaround here at the Etihad. Joshua King's got another one. And I have to show you as well, just to kind of give you how this game has panned out. I mean, we've actually had a fair few more shots than I thought we'd had. But honestly, it's been so close here. I will as well show you as well, just for anybody out there who's, uh, who's going to question it. The sliders, of course, as always, remaining on 50. What a turnaround here at the Etihad. I can't believe we've been able to do this. Oh, man, that is sensational. Just breathe, just breathe a sigh of relief because it's not done yet. We've still got a long way to go. But where on earth would we be without Joshua King and Callum Wilson in this team? They're pretty much 85, 90% of the goals we've got this year. Ryan Fraser's probably another 10%. Oh, these two are special for this team. And without them, you'd question seriously where we would be this season. King's 20th of the season. Wilson, I think, is on 14, 15. It's unbelievable work from the two of those guys. Here is Madison. Madison now has got the run from Callum Wilson again. And again, it's poor from City, who are stuck on the counter again. Wilson shot off the post. Rebounds there. It's 4-2 Bournemouth. The counter attack is just working wonders. I don't believe what I'm seeing. City just cannot cope with the pace up front. It's literally win the ball back in our defensive third. Two passes later, get Callum Wilson or Joshua King free. That's all we've had to do. Pace abusing to the absolute max. And Wilson's now got two to add to King's two. It's 4-2 Bournemouth. 
you couldn't write it. You actually could not write this. Here is Phillips out towards Dan Juma. Last minute now, Dan Juma up towards King. King back for Madison. The space again for Bournemouth as we try and feed King. But Hector steps in. But there's the full-time whistle. The substitution of David Brooks on at half-time for Lewis Cook and pushing Joshua King in towards centre-forward worked wonders. At half-time, I feared that this was going to be a landslide victory for Manchester City. How wrong was I? 4-2 Bournemouth. The title race will go on. Over to Man United to see if they can win. Because if they don't win their game in hand, we're three points clear. Southampton is our next game. We've played 35. United still with the game in hand. Still sit three points behind us. So provided we win, it again puts pressure on them. And again, we've got a pre-match press conference to do ahead of this game. But I'm, I'm slightly surprised that United aren't actually playing in this one. They might be playing in uh, the Europa League or the Champions League, though. So that could be it. Well, it'll be Europa League, actually, won't it? Yeah. Um, only a few matches remaining. Can your team win the title? We will fight till the end. Uh, secondly, the opponents you face is your team as hungry for victory as they are. That's not even a question. Um, of course, we are hungry for victory. We approach all matches with the same target of winning them. Um, Bournemouth won the last match with the comfortable margin of two goals over Southampton. Um, do you reckon that their morale is dwindling? The lads played well. We should really rely on our hard work and training. If they're not scared, they should be. Let's rely on hard work and training. Again, it's an important game. It's a game where we can't really afford a slip up. United do play the following day against West Ham. So they get to see how we perform in the game against Southampton. And given the scenario that we were in against Manchester City, I never expected us to come back in that game. Um, but the fact is we did. It was... Great heart, great determination. You can't take anything away from us. The way we played against Manchester City to be 2-0 down at half-time and come back to win it 4-2. Yes, we pace abused. Yes, we hit them on the counter four times in a row. Um, we didn't necessarily massively deserve to win the game. But um, based on a second-half performance, I don't think we deserve to lose it either. For Southampton, though, this is their team that they're going to go with. Is there any changes I can make to it, maybe? I don't think there'll be that many changes to really make to their team. I'm pretty sure they'll already have a good team out there. Uh, Vestergaard, Bednarek and Yoshida. Armstrong in midfield. Could we put Romeo back in there maybe? Let's do that. Let's move that like that. And then let's bring off El Yunusi. Oh no, let's bring off Shane Long and move Armstrong back into the bench. I think that's it. I think that's probably the best Southampton team that we are going to play against. Maybe Dalba in for, uh, for uh, Masuaku. So, that's, that's the Southampton team. There's our team on the left, unchanged for us. In fact, no, wait, 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 wait. Purely because of, uh, of the fact that he didn't do anything in that first half on the right-hand side. I'm going to put King in centre forward, and we're going to put Brooks on and bring Madison off the bench if we want to use him. So that is our team anyway. Fraser towards Wilson. Ryan Fraser continues. There's the ball back towards him. The pace immediately showing here for Bournemouth. As Fraser's in the penalty area trying to pull it back. Towards the feet of Joshua King who is the player to watch today. With four goals in his last three Premier League appearances. And he was nearly on hand there to make it one already in the game. As Wilson's in behind. Callum Wilson shot. Saved by McCarthy. Just couldn't quite get the angle for it. How funny would it be? Well, not so funny for me if uh, after that great performance against City, we threw it away with the game against Southampton here because the way it's panned out, we started the game off really well. And Defra has a shot there, which is narrowly wide. But we started the game off really well and we've quietened down a lot since that early spell. I don't really like that because we dominated and now we've allowed Southampton to sort of grow into the game a little bit. So we need to try and... Again, start to dominate a little bit. Here is Brooks towards Wilson. Ref, surely a free kick. Thank you. We'll take that. 30 seconds left of this first half as Che Adams is trying to break through. Ake steps in. Doesn't defend well. There was Ward Prowse. Sends it in. It's a free header for Hoiberg. And Southampton waste a really good chance just before halftime. Ake needs to do better with that. Far too many times so far today that he's in possession and he loses it without much of a challenge. It happened against City with Raheem Sterling opening up the scoring where he wasn't strong enough. And there, he's done the hard part and then he just concedes possession. It's like he waits way too long to play it out. And the ball still isn't clear yet. Down in the box. Vestergaard, blow your whistle ref. We're miles over half time. I was going to see. I, I, I feel like we were at least two minutes over the half time whistle there. But anyway, nil-nil at the break. Really good start to the game. 
after that, not so good. Um, but that's the way we started against Man City. At least now we're not 2-0 down like we were in that game. So we don't need to score four like we did. Um, we just need one at the moment to take the lead. But 0-0 at the break. Brooks has found space for Rico. Diego Rico in towards the penalty area. Southampton Rico! Bournemouth 1, Southampton 0. And the breakthrough is here. Diego Rico, an unlikely scorer. But he might have just written his name into the history books of Bournemouth if that is the goal that gets us one step closer to a Premier League title. Get in. What a goal as well. The space just opened up, didn't it? I apologise to headphone users as well. And McCarthy is beaten. Yes! I, I honestly, the way this is going, I thought to myself, after that great performance in the first game against City, I can see this being a nil-nil. It's his first goal of the season, Diego Rico, and what a time to get it. 13 minutes remain as Dalbert's ball in. No! Aki! What are you doing to me today, mate? Oh, no! Oh, Carrillo scores. I was going to say, with 13 minutes left, the one thing we don't want is an equalising goal from Southampton because that means that we'll only get the draw if it stays like it is. And then United, if they win against West Ham and they win their game in hand, will still be topped by two points. No! Okay, why are you letting him get in the front of you, man? Should be routine to deal with. Do you know what? He's been one of our best defenders, Ake. But today, I don't know what it is about him. He's just not, he just doesn't seem to be himself at the minute. And Carrillo scores. And all the hard work done by Diego Rico for his first goal of the, uh, the season is now undone. And we've just given the ball away straight from kickoff as well. I have to be careful that I don't end up losing the game. Ten minutes left here. A minute left here of injury time. And that is going to be it from the Vitality Stadium. But actually, there's still an opportunity here. For another chance for Southampton. Ake again. I'm not even going to lie. I'm fuming. I'm absolutely fuming. Because it wouldn't let me switch for starters to Metham. Who I wanted to change to. To run back and get the ball. But Ake. All he's got to do is control it. And kick it out. We've, got, we've thrown it away. Goodbye. Goodbye title race. This is just Goodbye. 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 I'm fuming. Absolutely fuming. We go from City. Where it's a spirited... Hearted comeback to a 4-2 win. I legit think that Southampton have had two shots. And Carrillo's got them both. I am livid. Goodbye title race. That's it, I think. We now we need to hope that United drop points. I can't believe we've lost this game. I genuinely can't believe we've lost it. So, over to Manchester United then to see how they get on as we sim the day. They're taking on West Ham in one of their two gaming hands that they've currently got. So, we've skipped past that. Um, we've got some loan offer for Edson Reese, one of our youth academy players, so we will accept that as well. Get him some first team football elsewhere. But depending on what's happened with Manchester United, we might now be. Yep, yeah, they won. So as it stands, Manchester United, who take on Palace next, whilst we play Leicester, then we'll face Everton in their second game in hand, are in prime position. They win that, they're top. Oh, why did we do this? Why did we have to slip off against Southampton, man? Obviously, we've got to go again. We've got to try and get back to winning ways against Leicester. But it hurts the fact that we took down City in the first game the way we did to then do that against Southampton. I remember as well, I said in the first half, didn't I? How funny would it be if we ended up losing that game? Why do I have to jinx myself, man? Two games to go and no more opportunities to slip up. This is the team we've gone with. Ake's dropped to the bench. Steve Cook in at centre-back alongside Metham. Lerma in for Phillips. Dan Juma in for Ryan Fraser. That's purely down to fitness reasons. And Lloyd Kelly in as well for Diego Rico. For Leicester, Schmeichel starts in goal. Casco, uh, Soyuncu is it? With Yerai, Pereira, Weigel, Tielemans, Ndidi, Gray, Vardy and Perez in their team. We're just going to have to bounce back. We've got no other option. We have to win the game. Oh, I hate having the pressure on us, but that's the way we find ourselves. Here is Wilson. Great turn at the start of this game. Wilson's in. And a great save by Kasper Schmeichel as well. Tight angle for Callum Wilson there, but he still made something of it, having the shot. 
Schmeichel makes a save. And I've just noticed as well that out of possession, Leicester City setting up with pretty much everybody barring Vardy behind the ball. Great winner back by Joshua King as Madison looking to turn. Feeds Dan Juma. Dan Juma inside towards King. Lovely turn as well by Joshua King. Surely. And it is. There is the breakthrough after 10 minutes. Much better start than what we've had so far in today's episode to the games as we've now found a goal as well. We had the pressure in the opening 10 minutes of the last game against Southampton. We didn't find the finish. This time we do. Dan Juma's ball. Look at this for a turn though by King. Receives it. Says, I know where I'm putting this ball. Does just that. 1-0 Bournemouth. A little bit of pressure off us now though as well. But it's completely out of our hands. You know, we have to now hope that United don't get a result in their other game. And we've just been told as well about a goal in the Manchester United game. They now lead Palace by a goal to nil. So as it stands, they will keep the same goals. Wilson's in. That's a poor shot. A really poor shot. But yeah, elsewhere, United in front against Palace. So we have to hold on to this win. Here is Madison. Madison, lovely play. Keeps hold of it. Finds Wilson back to Madison. And against his former club, he very nearly made it 2-0 Bournemouth. Great save, Kasper Schmeichel. Half time in a game now then as we can check out the other scores currently going on. Manchester United still in front against Palace by a goal to nil. City beating Brighton as well by a goal to nil. And Arsenal beating Spurs in the North London derby by a goal to nil as well. So it seems like 1-0 is the scoreline happening all around the Premier League games at the moment. But the important one, remember, to fix your eyes upon is that Manchester United one because... We need them to lose. Um, and at the moment, they're not. So I'll try to keep you updated with that score as the game goes on, if it pops up at the top right-hand side. But also, we have a job to do here, and we've still got a result to finish against Leicester. We need to win. Here is Ndidi back towards Tielemans. Some good possession this for Leicester. We can't allow them back into the game. Tielemans towards Ndidi. Now it comes again towards Tielemans. Gets the shot away, and it's the side netting. Much to the frustration of Tielemans, who maybe thought he'd scored here. Side netting, though, for us. I think Botland had it covered. So, uh, yeah, but the one thing we can't let happen is that Leicester get back in this match. We have to hold on to this win. Seconds remain here at the Vitality Stadium. And there is the full-time whistle. Bournemouth won. Leicester City nil. Joshua King's opening goal wasn't off for the three points. It was massive that we got that win here. We've done it. And now we move into the last game of the season to decide the Premier League title. I don't know what's happened in the Man United game. I don't remember seeing anything pop up um, telling me about another goal. So I'm taking that that United held on to a 1-0 win there as well. But we'll find out after this one. Manchester United 3, Crystal Palace 0 was the final score in their game. So United walking to three points in that one. Um, were you pleased with the second half? We were the better team, let's say. Um, and I'm just going to get through my interview here and hope that Everton can give us a result in the game in hand that Man United have got against them. Was the win ever in doubt? I trusted we'd give it our all. And finally, you won again. Do you think that Leicester City played well? The lads did it. <sighs> now we move into the last game of the season. But before that, we can see how Man United play against Everton. But then Everton play against us. What on earth is happening here? Wait, so Man United and Everton have a two-game... Oh, sorry, a two-day rest period? So they have got some incredibly difficult fixtures here. But as you can see, unless Man United fail to win, they will be top of the table going into the last game of the season where they will place, play against sorry, Leicester away and we face Everton away. What could Everton do here in this game? We will sim the day and let's see what happens in it. Please, can they get a result? Please, please, please. Watch the points change at the bottom of your screen. In the standing section, they have not... Manchester United have beaten Everton, which means they're now three points clear in the last game of the season. So here's how it stands. We have to win. We have to beat Everton at Goodison Park and hope that Leicester City beat Manchester United at the King Power Stadium. That is the only outcome that gets us the Premier League title. Anything else is not enough. If they draw and we win, not enough. It has to be Leicester City beating them. We threw it away, didn't we, with the game against Southampton? That was the game. That was the game that we couldn't afford to throw it away in. And we did exactly that. We did exactly that. We are here for the final game of the season. And looking at Everton's team, they are not looking so good for fitness. 
Remember, they've just played Man United two days before this. We have had a longer rest period, of course. Um, but their two centre-backs, Garay and Paulista, are uh, not looking too good in terms of their fitness. And the only other one I could probably bring on, looking at it, is Feeney, who's 65 rated. And that's pretty much it, because Michael Keane is also um, quite low on fitness. And Gabriel Jesus as well, very low on fitness. So... I honestly don't know what to do because Joshua King will run rampant, I reckon, against these two centre-backs if they are unfit. Do we start Garay and put Feeney in there just for fitness reasons? Because, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't really know what to do unless I just leave it because that's the team that Everton had selected before I came in. The only change I've made is uh, Digne in at left-back instead of Baines. That was the team that Everton pretty much had set up. Um, because I feel like if I put Feeney in, he's very low-rated, so that could work in my favour, but so too... Could the fitness? I'm going to leave it. I'm going to go with what Everton had set up, apart from that Dinye change that I made. And for our team, for the final Premier League game of the season, of course, we've got an FA Cup final to look forward to against Spurs coming up. Um, we have gone with Botnan in goal. Rico at left back. Ake back in the team here. I want to see how he performs ahead of the FA Cup final. Um, Steve Cook, Jack Stacey, Ryan Fraser, Jefferson Lerma, Lewis Cook, David Brooks, Madison and Joshua King. Wilson looking a little bit worse for wear in terms of fitness as well. We have to win and hope that Leicester beat Man United. Let's do it. Here is King, allowed to turn. He's got Fraser making the move. Lovely ball as well towards Ryan Fraser. And we tried to be cheeky and go to the near post of Jordan Pickford, but he read it. He read it like a book. Says, nope, no chance on that happening. And uh, our first real opportunity here is saved by Pickford. Madison to send in the corner towards the near post. And Wobie heads it back out. I'm going to try and go short from this one because the corners at the moment don't seem to be working too well. And we do go short. Here is Ryan Fraser now inside the penalty area of Everton. Fraser gets the shot away. I think it might have been blocked by Rico. Rico trying to come away with possession. Unable to do it. I think Rico blocked Fraser's shot there. Joshua King sees the run of Brooks. Brooks gets the ball under control. He's been brought down there, referee. And it is a free kick in a really dangerous area. The problem is I can't take free kicks, but we need a goal. We need to try and get ahead in the game. I'm going to bring on Dan Juma actually for David Brooks here. Half an hour to play, or just over that, as it's Madison stood over the ball. And it's going to have to be a specialist free kick from James Madison to really test the goalkeeper. We're going to try anyway. Madison stepping up to the plate. It's over the wall, and it's in! It's in! Surely, ref! Wait a minute, are you joking? It's in! It's given! I was going to say, surely that's in! Everton nil, Bournemouth won, Madison has scored the free kick. I don't know what's just happened. Pickford seemed to save it, and it crossed the line. I was going to say, you better give that referee Madison's free kick over the wall. I, I <laughs> At first, I thought the referee hadn't given it. I was about to say... Oh, man, we've got the goal. It's in such strange fashion. Pickford given the own goal. I need to see this again in a replay. Oh, what on earth has just happened there? There is no doubt that that has crossed the line there. Pickford carrying it over. Only just, but it is the goal anyway for Bournemouth. 30 minutes left here at Goodison Park. We don't yet know what is happening over at the King Park Stadium with Leicester City and Manchester United, but we needed a goal and we have found one. And could that be the goal that wins Bournemouth a league title? We're yet to see the Man United result. We haven't had anything pop up on the top right-hand side to tell us about a goal there or anything like that. So as far as I'm concerned, that game is still well and truly on. Obviously, if, it, if we've not had a goal, there is a goal now, though. And it's Arsenal against Watford as Arsenal 2, Watford 1 is the scoreline there. But again, nothing from Manchester United just yet, which could mean that it's still 0-0, which again, wouldn't be enough for us to win the title. We have to have Leicester win that game. 24 minutes left here at Goodison Park as well, and we must hold out in this game to hold on to it. There's the delivery in. Bottom will punch it away. Can we help it on its way? Not quite. Ake now needs to do that. And he finds the feet of Joshua King. King off to Madison. Madison off to Fraser. Is there another opportunity here? Ryan Fraser's got the run coming in of Joshua King, and he can't find it. And actually, as I'm making a change here, there has just been a pop-up of another goal and I didn't see who it was. Here is Dan Juma looking for a way through against Everton. Great feet from Dan Juma and he's got the pace as well. Right now as he drives into the area, finds Madison. Madison looks for the finish and he picks out the corner of the goal. Makes it 2-0 Bournemouth. And he will get credited with that one. It will not be an own goal to Pickford. 14 minutes left. Everton 0, Bournemouth 2. I think it's safe to say that the points are ours here from Goodison Park. But what is happening? 
at the King Power Stadium because I'm left completely in the dark at the moment through the legs of the defender there as well from Madison. Great finish. I just, I don't know what's happening though elsewhere as two changes on. Phillips is on for Lewis Cook and also Joshua King off for Callum Wilson. Here is Madison who has had a fantastic game here. Great work, James Madison. Now Wilson. Oh, what is that? Oh, it should have been 3-0 and it should have been Madison with a uh, an assist to his name as well. What a great run that is. Two minutes added time here. That is going to be it for the Premier League season. But the question is, who has won it as Wilson's in again here? No offside flag either, trying to feed Madison back. Cleared away, and that is that from Goodison Park. Form of two, Everton nil, three points in the bag. Celebrations? No, it doesn't look like it. It does not look like it, which suggests that United have either drawn or beaten Leicester City at the King Park Stadium. We came so close to a Premier League title, but so close is not enough. And we've unfortunately finished second in the Premier League, which is nothing to complain about at all. What an incredible first season it's been. To finish second is still a massive achievement for Bournemouth, and it's something we can build upon. But sadly, there is no league title for, as it seems like. And here are the full-time results then. Manchester United 4, Leicester City 1 in that game. Either I missed the goal updates or they just didn't come through. Because um, I don't remember seeing Man United at all in any of the goal updates that came through. So I, I could have missed them or they just didn't appear. But 4-1 Man United won in that game. It was never in doubt for them. Did you expect to beat Everton today? Um, we always prepare for the worst. We weren't too worried. There were some doubts, but we got there in the end. You won again. Do you think that Everton played well? Uh, there's no stopping us. The lads did it. Obviously, I can't really be too happy about this because we're so close. Um, we could have scored more. We could have scored more in that game. I'm surprised there's no questions about the title race because, honestly, that's what I thought we would get and we haven't done. Um, great work, says the Bournemouth board. But at this point in time, it doesn't feel like great work as the season comes to a close. Madison's goal settles Everton defeat. Uh, team of the competition announced. Let's see who's got in there. Ake's in it, even though he's had a bit of a hit and miss episode today. Botland's in it. Steve Cook. So that's credit to a fantastic defensive uh, team that we've had. In fact, all but one of our back four make it into the Premier League team of the year. Botland's in goal. Stevens from Sheffield United makes it in there. Ake, Cook and Stacey alongside Fraser, Lewis Cook, Callum Wilson and Joshua King. It's amazing, right, that Man United have won the Premier League and have no players in the team of the year. Stevens is in there. Eriksen's in there. Um, Ali Razor's in there from Brighton. And that's it. They're the only players that aren't ours from Bournemouth. Lewis Cook's in there. Fraser. Callum Wilson, like I said. Joshua King, like I said. Incredible feat for Bournemouth to have pretty much eight out of the 11 players in the team of the year for the Premier League. Just sadly, we couldn't quite go all the way. Harry Kane, the top scorer with the golden boots. Joshua King, so close, but I think Kane had 24 to his name. King with 21 for the season. Oh, 23, Harry Kane finished on. Goalkeeper of the tournament is Jack Butland. Unsurprising, most clean sheets in the league. Best defensive record in the league as well for Bournemouth. Player of the competition is Harry Kane of Spurs. But that is the one we didn't want to see. Manchester United crowned champions of the Premier League. De Gea sat alongside it with... Oli Gunnar Solskjaer that looks nothing like Oli Gunnar Solskjaer. But, um, yeah, I don't, I don't, that's, that's not Oli Gunnar Solskjaer at all. Yeah, that's a bit of a shame, that, because they should have had him in the game. That's, that's a shame. Um, that brings us to a close then for the Premier League season, my friends. That does it. Three points away from a Premier League title. So close, but so far. However, we still have one last shot at picking up a cup competition in our first season. The FA Cup final against Spurs will be the next episode. It will be its own individual episode as well. I will cover that and also bring the season to a close by showing you a squad report and all of that good stuff in the next episode. So if you have enjoyed this one, a like would be greatly appreciated. A massive thank you for all of your support as well on the channel. Really appreciate that too. If you are new and you like what you see, hit that subscribe button down below to follow me. I upload every single day. I'll try to at least to give you guys content. Until next time, have a great day, have a great evening, and I'll catch you all again soon. Adios.